Oh, hi there. This is Mike with All Things Lost, and I want to talk to you about something that just keeps me up at night. I want to talk to you about lost media. Now, lost media is any piece of pop culture that has been lost or never released to the public. So here are just five of the most sought after pieces of lost media, starting with Alfred Hitchcock's The Mountain Eagle. The Mountain Eagle was Alfred Hitchcock's second ever movie. And like a lot of these pieces of lost media, it had a really troubled development with heavy snow delaying production, a local house being destroyed, and the director getting altitude sickness. All that we have of this movie today are a handful of still photos, some behind the scenes shots, and one movie poster. Because no actual footage exists, the exact details of the story and cast aren't totally clear, but what we do know is it's based in Kentucky, follows the story of three men seeking the attention of a school teacher, which eventually leads to wrongful imprisonment, affairs, a jailbreak, and eventually murder. Somehow there was also a dog involved in production, as seen from the movie's poster and from one of the surviving stills. The movie has gone on to be considered the most wanted film in the world and tops the British Film Institute's 75 most wanted list. The movie went missing in Hitchcock's lifetime and he has stated in numerous interviews that he didn't like the film and is glad it's lost. In 2003, the band Green Day were finishing work on their new album, Cigarettes and Valentines. They were nearly finished when the master recordings for their entire album were stolen. And rather than re-recording the entire album, the band decided to start from scratch, leading to their hit record, American Idiot, which would go on to redefine the band, sell 14 million copies worldwide, and spawn a Broadway musical. In an interview with NME Magazine, the band confirmed five songs to have been on the record. Cigarettes and Valentines, Too Much Too Soon, Waste Away, Sleepyhead, and Dropout. That same interview seems to imply the song Youngblood was meant for the album, but this has been debated. Other songs rumored to have been on the album include Olivia, Shoplifter, Letter Bomb, Hearts Collide, Walk Away, Lights Out, and some of the American Idiot B-sides, like Shoplifter, Governator, and Favorite Son. Also to note, in 2003, the band's side project, The Network, released the album Money Money 2020, which is rumored to have some of the tracks from Cigarettes and Valentines, but Green Day has consistently denied these rumors. So far, only two of the confirmed tracks from Cigarettes and Valentines have been released, the title track and Too Much Too Soon. The band considers the loss of their album to be a blessing in disguise as they felt the album wasn't quote, maximum green day. Beowulf is one of the most important pieces of English literature, not only because of its pop culture influence, but also as one of the oldest surviving works of the English language. And despite this popularity and historical significance, the book's author, the year was written, and even the actual title are completely unknown. Everything we know about this book comes from one single surviving copy, the Noel Codex, named after the book's first known owner, Lawrence Noel. What we know about the story is that it's based in the 6th century, and this manuscript that we have was made in around 1000 CE. And tragically, in 1731, this manuscript, this only surviving copy, was damaged in a fire, causing a large excerpt of the climactic dragon fight at the end of the book to be lost forever. This section is one of the greatest mysteries of English literature. The most recent piece of lost media I want to talk about today is the Snyder Cut of 2017's Justice League. Anyone who's seen the theatrical release of Justice League knows it for its inconsistent tone, its weak script, and its really bad CGI. But these issues are at least partially due to the movie being completely reworked at the last minute after Zack Snyder was removed as director 
being replaced with Avengers director Joss Whedon. Snyder's take on DC Comics was in stark contrast to Whedon's upbeat comedic stylings you can see in his Avengers movies. And this made it painfully obvious who directed which scene. And this has led fans to desperately hope for a Zack Snyder cut of the movie with a more consistent tone and without Superman's CGI lip. Before leaving production, Snyder had almost 90% of the movie completed with only visual effects and sound editing needing work. With Snyder stepping down, Whedon would end up reshooting 15 to 20% of the entire movie. And while the basic story structure was about the same, a huge amount of world building was removed from Snyder's reportedly three and a half to four hour cut to fit Warner Brothers demand for a two hour runtime. These cut sections include the Flash time traveling, longer introductions for Aquaman, The Flash, and Cyborg, introducing new characters like Darkseid and Martian Manhunter, and some additional scenes from already established characters like Lex Luthor, Mira, and Ares. After the film's initial release, an online petition was made demanding the Snyder Cut, and this movement sparked support from Aquaman actor Jason Momoa, Cyborg actor Ray Fisher, comic book enthusiast Kevin Smith, and many, many others. But that wasn't all. Snyder had originally envisioned a Justice League trilogy, which would have brought together elements that have since gone unresolved in the DC Universe. Plans for the trilogy included Batman dying, the Green Lantern's first appearance in the universe, Darkseid as the main villain, and Justice League 2 concluding with the team losing, leading to Justice League 3 being based in the nightmare Batman envisioned in Batman v Superman. But this story does have a happy ending because in May 2020, Warner Brothers and Zack Snyder confirmed the Snyder Cut will be released in 2021. With a show as beloved as Doctor Who, you might be surprised to find out that at one point there were 147 episodes missing from the show. Before 1978, the BBC would regularly delete all episodes and reuse the tape. This resulted in 147 episodes of Doctor Who being lost. The BBC would eventually begin searching for these lost episodes, finding 50 of them, but still leaving 97 episodes lost today. These 97 episodes are at least unique in Lost Media in that they have all their audio preserved from various fans and private collectors who would record the show. And this has led the BBC to be able to compensate for the missing footage by commissioning animated reconstructions of some of the episodes. All the footage from these 97 episodes has at least a chance of being found, with the exception of one episode, The Feast of Stephen. This was a Christmas special that aired only once and had no copies made for overseas distribution, meaning it is completely and entirely lost. The most recent discovery of these lost episodes occurred in 2013 when a Nigerian television station found nine of the lost episodes. But before the BBC could retrieve the episodes, one of them was stolen from the TV station and is still lost today. So there are just a handful of the pieces of lost media that I think are the most sought after. If you know of any pieces of lost media that you think are even more sought after, please let me know. This is Mike with All Things Lost. See you soon.